On today's episode, Cybertruck's 9,000 ton Gigapress arrives in Texas, the Tesla Semi starts production for real this time, Shanghai blows past last year's record production numbers, and Giga Berlin's insider meeting reveals Tesla's global plan to support US growth. There's lots to get into, so let's get going. The world's largest die-casting machine, the 9,000-ton Gigapress destined for Tesla's Cybertruck production line, has arrived in Texas. Sources on Twitter are reporting that the new press arrived in the port of Houston on September 28th on a ship that set sail from Genoa, Italy. This tracks for the Gigapress because we know that the headquarters for the Idra Group, who manufacture the giant casting machine, is located near Brescia, which is kind of in between Milan and Venice. So the port of Genoa would be their best bet for an export hub to the USA. This would seemingly be the very same machine that Idra highlighted in June of this year as their largest and most powerful casting machine to date. The company made the new press the star of their open house event over the summer and even invited the YouTube famous engineer Sandy Monroe to check out the machine in person. According to an itinerary posted by Giga Texas drone pilot Joe Tegmeyer, the shipment came in 54 separate crates weighing in at 77 and a half thousand kilograms. This tracks with previous reports we heard over the summer that Idra would have to disassemble the Gigapress to ship it and then Tesla would have to reassemble on site, so this will be a very long process. There is no word yet on when this shipment will arrive at the factory in Austin, but once it does, the press would conceivably be reconstructed on the production floor and a long process of calibration and test pressing would begin. This is the biggest machine of its kind in the whole world, so it will likely be casting the rear underbody of the Cybertruck that will support the truck bed, the largest part of the body assembly. The Gigapress can fabricate large pieces of the vehicle frame by applying high pressure in a die casting process. There is one giant die mold for each component and that mold is split into two halves. Once the press is closed, the two halves of the die are pressed together tight with 9,000 tons of force. Then molten aluminum alloy is injected into the vacuum sealed molds with a high speed plunger. This has to be done so precisely that the liquid metal fills the mold perfectly with zero gaps or air bubbles. Once the metal hardens, the press releases the die and pulls the two halves apart to reveal the newly formed component. Lubricants are used to allow for easy extraction, and the pieces are put into a quenching tank to cool by a robot after being removed. The open mold is then cooled and cleaned by robots before starting the entire process over again. The current generation of Gigapress machines at Tesla put out about 6,200 tons of force while casting parts for the Model Y. This new iteration, which was previously thought to be impossible to build, even by Intra themselves, can put out over 9,000 tons of force, allowing for even larger components to be cast, and a very scared Vegeta. The existing Gigapress machines create both the front and rear quarters of the Model Y frame in single, giant chunks of metal a job which previously took about 300 individual robots connecting over 70 pieces just to build the rear quarter. This is how Tesla has been able to continue maximizing efficiency at their gigafactories and continuing to ramp up production numbers year over year. More on that later. One quick check before we move on, going back to that number 77,000 kilograms. Sounds like a lot, but Remember that a Gigapress is like the size of a small house and made largely out of solid steel components. According to the Idra spec sheet, it looks like the 9000 series press is supposed to weigh just under 600,000 kilograms or 590 tons. So not to debunk everything we've been saying here, Tesla definitely did receive a big shipment of heavy things from Italy and they very well could be new parts of the 9,000 ton press, but a full-fledged Cybertruck Gigapress ready for action? It doesn't look like this is the final form, at least. 
So not to debunk everything we've been saying here, Tesla did definitely receive a large shipment of heavy things from Italy, and they very well could be new parts of the 9,000 ton press. But this looks more like step one of many before we get to a full-fledged Cybertruck Gigapress ready for action. Tesla has announced that production on their electric semi-truck has officially begun, and I know we've already said that like twice in the past month, but this time is for real. On October 6th, Elon Musk announced over Twitter that the company had begun assembling the first batch of their electric semi, and that the trucks would be delivered to PepsiCo by December 1st of this year. Elon said the trucks come with 500 miles of range, and he thinks they are super fun to drive. Later, that statement was confirmed by the official Twitter account of PepsiCo on October 7th. They wrote, quote, We can confirm our first electric Tesla semis December 1st, 2022, supporting our Frito-Lay plant in Modesto, California, and our PepsiCo beverages plant in Sacramento. So this is the real deal, people. We're finally at go time, and it's been a journey. Tesla launched their semi-truck concept in 2017, and a ton of companies piled on to order the shiny new zero-emission cargo hauler. Pepsi immediately came out swinging with the biggest order out of anyone for 100 vehicles. The plan was to use the first 15 of these electric semis to begin transitioning their Frito-Lay facility in Modesto, California into a zero-emission factory. But unfortunately, it's taken a bit longer than expected to get the vehicle to production. A prospective delivery in 2019 slipped to 2020, then to 2021, and now we're here just hoping that a small handful finally make it into circulation before the end of 2022. Tesla Semi production is currently happening at a special facility near the Nevada Gigafactory that went into operation last year. We know it's very low volume for now, but the goal is to move Semi production over to Giga Texas when the factory is able to support higher volume output of the 4680 battery cell. In the meantime, Tesla has been working to install the first megacharger station at Frito-Lay's Modesto, California facility allowing them to take the delivery of the Tesla semis and put them to work immediately. This is going to be very, very limited use for the first phase of operation, but it's still an important change to see happening. The standard diesel semi accounts for a huge chunk of carbon emissions in the North American transport industry. Medium and heavy duty trucks make up only 5% of vehicles on the road, but account for about 24% of US transportation emissions. Plus, they are very expensive to operate. At 500 miles of range per charge, it's estimated that a Tesla Semi would come in at about half the average cost of operation compared to a diesel truck. So the economics make sense, assuming that the infrastructure is in place to support them. Like we said, the Tesla Semi requires a special mega charger that outputs up to 1.5 megawatts of energy. That's six times more power than a regular Tesla supercharger at 250 kilowatts. Until these high-powered charging stations are common across more loading and unloading facilities, the usefulness of the electric semi will be pretty limited. But give it a couple of months and we'll see how this all works out in real life, and we can finally stop speculation for a while. By the way, if you're enjoying the content we create here on the Tesla space and would like to support us, check out our Patreon page. We've got some exclusive perks for our Patreon supporters, and it helps us grow the team and continue producing this content. New details released from a Tesla all employees meeting in Berlin reveal the company's plans for global expansion, while at the same time putting new focus on domestic US production. Giga Berlin's Works Council reportedly went over the factory's achievements this year so far, and then discussed Tesla's plans for the next few months. These plans detail how Tesla is making a global effort to bolster US production to take advantage of the new Inflation Reduction Act tax credits, and the extra spending the US government will be committing to the green energy industry over the next 10 years. According to the meeting notes, as many as 50 employees will be sent from Giga Berlin to U.S. facilities as part of this plan. As a result, Tesla says it will be temporarily pausing some battery production at the Berlin facility. 
However, Tesla says that aside from this change, they don't expect Giga Berlin to slow down. Despite the temporary pause in battery production, Tesla says the team will continue producing battery electrodes, and testing and calibration of the new 4680 equipment will continue. So progress will still be made on that front, while Berlin employees are helping out in the US. The facility also recently hit the milestone of 2,000 Model Ys per week, and they believe they can still hit 5,000 units produced per week by year's end. Even more promising, local drive unit production in Berlin has ramped up to over 100 units per day and is expected to grow even faster once the planned second work shift is added in 2023. Currently, Giga Berlin's drive unit production is being supported by imports from Giga Shanghai. And while it is great to see Giga Berlin starting to bring more of its production in-house, it's hard to say that Shanghai is suffering. The latest numbers from the Chinese Gigafactory show that it sold and exported over 83,000 vehicles just in September, beating last September's numbers by about 48%. Overall figures indicate that Shanghai has sold over 64% more vehicles up to this point than last year. That's over 483,000 vehicles delivered this year despite the shutdowns and disruptions. Estimates for the factory's output after the recent upgrades have predicted that it might be able to put out 1.2 million cars per year or 100,000 units per month once it fully ramps up, and they're pretty close to that number already. Giga Shanghai accounts for a large chunk of Tesla's global sales, but the facility is also used to supply other factories with parts they can't make yet or are in the process of bringing in-house like the drive units for Giga Berlin. The Shanghai facility has consistently been the workhorse of Tesla's global production network, and it's pretty incredible to see the numbers laid out like this. Hopefully, with enough time, the other Gigafactories will be able to meet and exceed this pace of manufacturing. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.